What's going on, beer tubers? It's Eric back at you with yet another beer review. And today I'm looking at another beer from Shells or August Shells Brewing Company, another in the Noble Star collection. And I've actually pre poured it out because I wanted to sip it, let it warm up, formulate some opinions prior to because some of these Berliner vices tend to be a little bit more difficult for my palate. Um, so there's my honest Abe answer here. This was released just not too long ago, it was bottled in October. This is the Don of Aurora. This is their, they call it a Stark beer, Berlin style wheat ale. So the, typically a, a Berliner Weiss is um, three, two and a half to four percent. We'll just go there. Uh, this is clocking in at 7.5. So it's, it's kind of like their champagne, uh, if you will, the champagne of the Berliner Weiss series. Uh, it's, it's very unique. Um, I find it pretty impressive just to you know, mix up the series and not just do another fruit for the holidays, like cranberries or something. But um, yeah, anyways, I pre-poured this one out into a glass and it's a really, really murky, murky, I mean, borderline opaque, uh, very, very lack, uh, big lack of effort, uh, effervescence. Part of my tongue tonight, Jesus. Um, they do talk about this one using uh, that house yeast culture, that Britannomyces um, bacteria mixture, and then they um, fermented secondarily in Cypress wood tanks. So bottle condition from October until just, you know, beginning of December for distribution. But yeah, this one does look nice in the glass, a little actually unappeasing or unappealing, I guess. When I kind of looked at it, I was like, ooh, it's like murky not fully fermented but anyways let's dive into the nose this is the last in the 2014 um august shells noble star collection so let's get the nose wow um so they talk about this vibrancy of fruit uh flavors and nose on the little tag here um they pack a novel onto that thing but particularly i get this really overripe kiwi Almost some subtle, like, uh, Jolly Rancher cherry, which is a bizarre descri description, but, yeah, I get this kiwi, um, almost passion fruit, star fruit, if you will, those really, really bright fruit flavors, and there's kind of a, a honeydew slash cantaloupe, I mean, those don't really go hand in hand, but, um, really tropical and juicy smelling, so, Really nice smelling stuff. I don't really pick up on too much sourness or acidity in the nose. It smells actually rather malty and sweet, so that could be perturbing. But uh, let's dive in. It's in the Assassin Tiku. Cheers, and hope you all had a great Christmas and Happy New Year. Wow. That wallops on the acidity and the, the yeah, just strikes the palate. Um, yeah, it's a lot of those bright, passion, tropical, just booming with fruitiness. Um, you could almost pinpoint any fruit in there. But really some kiwi, mango, papaya, pineapple, all that stuff's kind of jumping out at you. And you're brushed with this nice tart sourness and acidity. Um, really full mouthfeel on this one. And that is a detractor for me. I know it's 7.5% alcohol by volume, it's kind of an Imperial Berliner Weiss, if you will, or Stark Weiss beer, but um, a little much for me. Definitely a beer to open with friends. Definitely a beer to share with friends and family. Perfect for the holiday season. Uh, highly recommend going and picking this one up. If I had to rate them um, in the whole series this year, this one is not my favorite. I thought it was. Initially, I had a, a sample in a liquor store, and I was really, really impressed. I'm um, not sure if I just got a slightly off bottle, but it was crystal clear. It was really, really different than this. Um, but this is very good. It's probably... Hmm? To be honest? I like the cherry the most, the Black Forest cherry. North Country Brunette was really good. Um... Just the basic one was beautiful. <laughs> and uh, definitely Frambois du Nord was 
top dog. Um, but yeah, anyways, ratings wise, this is going to get a 93 for me. Um, I still blown away by the sour program that is August shells. They use these, you know, 20 plus foot high Cypress wood tanks from 1936 that hold all these um, native microbes and yeasts that make this beer so interesting and intriguing. And they're building a whole new facility to hold six of these tanks. The sour program has exploded. One thing I will say, cork caged uh, sour beers, Love it. Love the packaging. Love everything about it. I don't really love the $15 price tag. Um, it's not really in any league of, you know, some of those other sour breweries out there. No names need to be mentioned, but just kind of kills me. After Minnesota Tax, it's, you know, $16, $17 bottle. <sighs> you know, I'm a price guy. It takes all things into consideration. If I don't love the beer, can't really justify the price. So, yeah, I'm going to go 93 I do love it. Um, I just, my wallet hates it because I like it enough and I can't buy enough of it. So uh, let me know what you guys think if you've had the uh, blessing to try some of these Noble Star beers. I know Ryan Rashani wanted me to get you a few of these um, and that may still be possible in the new year. So we'll have to talk off camera and uh, the rest of you, uh, definitely go pick this one up if you're local. And if you're not, um, maybe ask for one or two of them as an extra. They're great extras. So um, yeah, that'll just about do it. So see you again in another beer review. Cheers.